Hello, this is Professor Matt Catrullis of Rio Hondo College, and this is the video for Experiment 5 for the Chemistry 110 class, which focuses on electron configuration and periodic properties. I would like to start with a brief overview of what we're going to be doing in this experiment. First, we will be looking at uh, the use of flame tests to identify various ions. We'll then spend some time discussing and writing out electron configurations. And then finally, we will look at atomic radius, which is a example of a periodic trend. Before we get into a more detailed discussion of flame tests, I'd like to review the concept of shells and subshells in an atom. Now, we already know that protons and neutrons are found inside the nucleus, but electrons are generally found outside the nucleus. Sometimes we say orbiting the nucleus, although that would be an inexact term. Now, every electron is located we'll say within a shell or energy level and those two phrases are interchangeable with each other so if I say shell or energy level they mean the same thing and we designate those shells uh, with a letter N which can be a number one two three any positive integer now those numbers tell us something useful about the likelihood of finding an electron near the nucleus. The lower that number is, the more likely you are to find electrons near the nucleus at some point in time. So low numbers like one, the electron tends to be very close to the nucleus most of the time. Whereas if the uh, energy level number is eight, say, then that electron tends to spend its time far away from the nucleus. Those shells can be broken into subshells, and we'll spend more time in a moment going over the details of the subshells. But for right now, let's just say that if electrons are in the same shell but different subshells, they likely have different energies. And we are going to name those types of subshells uh, with the letters S, P, D, and F. When we look at the first shell, or the first energy level, it has only one subshell in it, and we call that 1s. And in fact, you could say that the first shell just is a 1s subshell. When you get to the second shell, we have an s subshell, and we name it 2s, and a p subshell, and we name that 2p. And we're going to expand on this a bit further in a moment. The reason this is important to us for today's experiment is because when we add energy to an atom, what happens is that atom will become excited and the electrons can migrate from a lower shell out to a higher shell. Always works in that direction. They always go from lower energy to higher energy when they become excited. And we'll be using a flame uh, as our source of energy for today's experiment. Now what happens then is we have an atom which is excited, it has more energy than it normally can hold, and there's going to be a tendency for that atom to fall back to its regular uh, ground state position, its low energy state. But to do that, the atom can't just destroy energy. There's what's called a conservation of energy law. So it has to somehow or another dispense with that energy, and it does that by emitting a photon of light. And these photons, some of them are visible lights of different color, and other photons occur in the ultraviolet range or infrared range, which we cannot see with our eyes, but we can detect with uh, specialty equipment. The reason this is important to us is that every atom, when it undergoes this emission process, emits a unique spectrum of light. It gives off a distinct pattern of colors. And by looking at those colors, we can identify the type of atom which is being represented. So here is a picture which I think kind of summarizes this rather usefully. So here what we're doing is we're adding energy to an atom in the form of light. Uh, we'll be using flame, remember, today to excite the atom. 
This is a lower energy shell and this is a higher energy shell. So as we add energy to an atom, the electron jumps from a lower shell to a higher shell. And we now say that this is an excited atom. The atom is going to then fall back to its lower energy ground state and so the electron falls back to the lower shell and in the process has to get rid of that energy and it does that by shooting off a photon which is represented here by this interesting little symbol. So I'm going to link to a video in a moment that will show you the flame tests being performed on seven different ions of which we are going to be focused on six. So we are interested in the calcium, potassium, barium, strontium, copper-2, and sodium ions. The film will also start by showing you the lithium ion, although you don't need to write down information on it. All of the samples also have chloride ion, but they will not produce a visible color. So, for example, the solution that you're going to be seeing here is calcium chloride solution. So the calcium ion will give off a color, but the chloride does not. Potassium chloride, same concept. The potassium will give off a color, but chloride does not. So on page 55 of your lab report, you want to describe the colors that you see. Some of these samples might give away one color, some might be two. You might see a, a quick change in the colors. So for example, you don't want to write down yellow if it's yellow-green, or you don't want to write down green if it's blue-green. You want to be as descriptive as you can. Once you've watched these uh, flame test videos, I'm going to show you unknowns which were taken from that video. And uh, they're going to be from these six here, not lithium. And your job is to go ahead and figure out which one of these ions is unknown A, which one of these ions is unknown B, and which is C. Uh, I'm not going to do the same one twice. So the answer, for example, won't be calcium, calcium, strontium, or something like that. So then you're going to record the colors of the unknowns and then try to match the uh, unknown with its element. The spot plate diagram is only useful when we're performing this experiment in the lab, so just cross that out on the top of page 55, and I won't go into it in any greater detail. Finally, I'd like you to answer question one on the bottom of page 55 in complete sentences. From here, I would like you to go to the linked video, uh, which shows you the flame tests for the various elements. And then when you're done with that, uh, continue on to the next video in this series, which will begin with the unknowns. Thank you.